to die. Or that you will understand this framework. And the Sterling Management System is just that. It is a non-prescriptive framework. It's built on best practices in management. And it tells you a lot of the things that you need to be doing and the connections that you need to be making in several areas of your organization. It does not tell you how you have to go about it. Because you're going to go about it a little bit different way in healthy kids than you are from the Department of Transportation, than you are from the tax collector's office, or, or from the Department of Health or Elder Affairs. So, you know, as we go through, you'll see that the, the criteria are built as a series of questions. And the majority of those questions say, how do you do this? What is your process for doing this? And inherent in that are what we call the requirements of the criteria. So for instance, in leadership, one of the questions says basically, how do you communicate, how do you set and communicate vision and values in your organization? So the requirement is, you need to be doing that somehow, some way. But some of you might do it through a tiered leadership system. Some of you might do it with, uh, you know, vision, mission, values on a name card or something like that. You might have multiple ways of doing that. There's no one correct way to do it, but you need to be doing it. Otherwise, people don't know where your organization is going. The second objective <coughs> is to recognize some opportunities for improvement in your organization. As we go through the criteria and the categories of the criteria today, you're going to see some areas where you have strengths in your organization. We do this and we do it very well. And we actually have some results that show that we do it well. There might be other areas where you say, we haven't even thought about that or we do something but it doesn't really work. And those would be opportunities for improvement. This whole management model is all about continuous improvement, decisions based on fact or data, right? and, and moving your organization towards the accomplishment of your mission. The third one, third objective, is to know how to implement some tools to get you started on your continuous uh, excellence journey. And some of those tools you'll see within the framework of some of the activities that we're doing. Okay. And the criteria itself is a tool. Where did we come from? Florida Sterling Council is based on the national Malcolm Baldrige uh, quality program. And Malcolm Baldrige program started in 1987 under President Ronald Reagan. And he was looking, he was working with the Department of Commerce looking at how do we keep America competitive. And as they were starting to have some of these conversations, they engaged an organization called NIST which is the National Institute for Standards and Technology. And a combination of people from NIST, from the Department of Commerce, and legislators, identified some of the, the top performing companies in the United States. Now this was all private sector at that time. And they identified those by their customer satisfaction ratings, their employee satisfaction ratings, their stock prices, and financial viability, profitability. So they were looking at the results to identify those companies. The task was to go out and look at these companies and say, what do they have in common? What can other companies learn from these companies? And when they did that, what they found that there were seven areas of commonality. Those seven areas were the leadership processes they had in place, the strategic planning processes they had in place. It's not that they did everything the same way, but they had some very uh, 
complete and systematic processes for those. So leadership, strategic planning, the way they dealt with their customers, their measurement systems, the fact that they paid attention to developing their workforce and working with their workforce, their process management operations areas were actually managed as opposed to just kind of happening. And the results. Those seven areas became the seven categories of the Baldrige criteria. Now, Baldrige is at the national level. There are currently 87 countries that use this same management model. Some of them tweak it a little bit. Uh, some of them use part of this and part of something else, but basically 87 different countries utilize this process and have an award process. Now Sterling is much more than an award process. Right? We're all about helping organizations improve. We do all kinds of training to help organizations improve. And sometimes people think, well, Sterling just, you know, has the Governor Sterling Award and they do criteria training. Now we do all kinds of things to help you. So, we are based on Baldrige. There's a set of core values, and in the criteria book that we'll be looking at today, um, there's, there are several pages on the core values. They are the underlying belief system that the criteria are built upon. For instance, visionary leadership is a core value. And then we see that concept of what it takes to be a visionary leader in the questions that are in the leadership category. It is a system of management by fact. There's an entire category that's just called measurement, analysis, and knowledge management. Because if we don't have the data, the right data, all of your organizations have data, right? How many of you have data coming out the yin yang? But how do we determine what, what are the right measures? What is the right data to tell us what we need to know? And then we can base our decisions on that. It's a system of continuous improvement. Throughout the, the criteria and the scoring system, there's a component that's called learning. And that learning means how do you consistently evaluate and improve what you do in everything across the board. <clears throat> sometimes it's informal, sometimes it's very formal. This is also a system of communication. Up and down the organization, across the organization, diagonally on the organization. Almost, I, I can say almost every, every organization, public, private, that I have worked with, Somebody in the room will tell me that we have a problem with communication. How many of your organizations have a problem with communication? Okay. That's oftentimes because we don't close the loop on it. And we'll talk about that when we get to leadership. 